Well, hey guys, welcome back. Uh, let's talk more specifically about tracks and channel strips. Uh, from a previous video, we showed that this here is our individual track area, which contains our regions. And this area over here is called the track header. So if you've been using Ableton Live a little bit, you'll probably notice that the track header for the arrangement window is over on the right-hand side. And you'll probably notice that between Ableton and Logic, sometimes what's on one side in one program is on the other side in the other program. And that's also the case for the browsers. So I can select individual tracks with my mouse. I can navigate through them with the up and down arrows. I can click and drag them to a different slot here in the main window. And I can also delete them. Now when I press delete here, it's also going to delete the region, but I can delete the tracks itself. And you'll probably notice when I select a different track, it's going to zoom in on itself. And that's a feature called Zoom Focus Track. And I like using this because it basically gives me a better view of the track. But if you didn't want that, you can go up here to View and deselect Zoom Focus Track. If I move my mouse pointer to the border between the different track areas, I can click and drag to expand the track headers. I can use that idea also for other borders between different windows and logic here. I can also expand it horizontally or take for instance with the mixer. If I click and drag at the border here, I can expand and shrink that. Over here are the track header controls. So I have mute. <laughs> solo and the record button what's cool about record is I actually don't really need to have that but I don't have to press that button to record when I select a track logic is already in a record mode or record armed and I can just press R and start recording on a track also have volume, pan, pretty self-explanatory. So if I wanted to change the view here or the controls of the track header, I'm going to control click in a blank space of the track header and go down here to track header components. Now I can add or take away some of the different controls. So let's say for, for me, I wanted to add the track icons to the track header. I'm just going to select that. So the way I see using the track header and how many controls I want to have on it, I like to have as much room here in the main window as possible for my music regions. So I like having my track header a bit more minimalistic. So by pressing I, I can open up what's called the inspector, which opens up here on the left. And this is going to show me more advanced controls for my tracks. So the channel strip on the far left of the inspector corresponds to the selected track in the main window. And as you can see, when I move the volume fader in the track header, it's going to move the volume of the channel strip to the exact same amount. So this channel strip, just like the channel strips in the mixer, allow me to do things like change the in and out audio routing of a track or add and edit effect plugins on a track and do several other things. So let's talk more specifically about the signal flow of an individual track. So the sound or signal from a track is going to originate from whatever is in this rectangle here. So this is a software instrument track. This is where I'm going to place my software instrument. Uh, in the case of an audio track, it will contain an input source, which is going to show you the specific input jack on your audio interface that you would plug a microphone or an instrument into. And we also have aux tracks, which usually use what are called bus paths as their input. And we'll touch on that a little bit later. Okay, so on our track, the sound is going to go from the sampler plugin, the piano sound, and then into this area called the insert effects plugin slots. So each one of these rectangle slots is where I can place an effect that's going to alter the sound. So you can see I have a compressor here, channel EQ, which is an equalizer, a space D, which is a type of reverb. And I can go in and change each one of these if I'd like. So if I click here in the menu drop down, and then I click, I want to find the folder called Logic. And you can see I have a lot of different plugins. They're all uh, organized by type. I can move these around by clicking and dragging these to a different area, a different slot. But I'm just going to do that. 
And you can see that this compressor uh, here and this silver compressor are both grayed out. And that means that they're bypassed or turned off. And I can turn them back on here by clicking over here on the left. And that means the signal is going to flow through them unaltered. So the signal flow for the insert plugins is from top to bottom. So from the piano, it's going to go to the compressor, then the channel EQ, space D, and so on and so forth down the chain. So after the effects plugins, the signal leaves the track to whatever destination track you want to send it to. And this is the output slot, which is the primary output for our track. And it's going to stereo output, which is the main output in Logic. And as the signal is leaving the track out of the output, you determine its volume here with the fader and panning with the pan knob. And panning determines how much audio signal goes to the right or left of the stereo field. And if I click and drag down on the knob, I can make the signal go left. And by clicking and dragging up, I can make it go to the right. And by option clicking on the knob, it will force it back to exactly center. After the audio signal leaves the track here on the left, it needs to go to a destination track. And that's what the channel strip on the right side of the inspector shows. So by default, when I open up the inspector, it shows me this output, which is the selected track's main output. So this channel strip here on the right is the stereo output. And the stereo output is actually the main master final output destination for all sound out of Logic. And you can see that there is no output track able to be selected on the stereo output. It goes right to your speakers. So if this is muted, or even if its volume is down, you'll see that you won't hear our piano even though I haven't done anything to this track. And you can see that the audio meters are still moving. And that's because the stereo output is further down the audio signal chain. And because I said that all audio is eventually routed to the stereo output, if this is muted, you won't hear any audio come out of Logic. All right, let's finally start talking about buses, which took me a bit longer to figure out. So buses are another way to route audio out of a track into another track. Uh, a bus path isn't a physical track per se, it's just the name of the path I use to send the audio signal along. The aux track is the physical track that a bus usually inputs into. And I think Logic has over 200 numbered bus paths that you can choose from. So not to be feared, buses and auxes can be used to mix and process audio in some very interesting and flexible ways. And in this instance, and I'm going to show you, the bus that connects my piano track to the aux track allows me to process a portion of my piano sound with a reverb effect plugin. So let's take a closer look. If I shift click on any of the left channel strips output selectors, it's going to show me the output destination on the right channel strip. So I already talked about this just a bit ago, and we currently have the right channel strip showing me the stereo output. So let's shift click on bus nine, and the right channel strip has now changed to be the aux track that bus nine is routed into. And you can see that it has bus nine as its input. These knobs here are called bus sends, and they determine how much audio signal volume I want to send along the bus. So looking on our aux track, you can see it has a space D, which is a reverb plugin, as one of its FX slots. So let's play the piano. And as I start to bring this knob up, send nine, more volume is going to go into the aux track with the reverb plugin and naturally you'll hear the reverb become more pronounced. One more thing I'll show you real quick about the track inspector is this drop down box here called track. And this gives me uh, a bunch of controls that will change some parameters for the whole track. So I don't use this a lot, but two things that might come in handy. Uh, transpose will transpose all the MIDI notes up or down by a certain amount of semitones. If I click and drag here. And delay is going to move either forward in time or backwards in time the, the timing of the track by a very small amount. So I can either do that by what's called a tick, which is a very small division of a beat, or I can do that by milliseconds.
Well, you may ask, well, why do we need the inspector when we have the mixer where we can see all the channel strips in our project? Well, this is fine if you have a two monitor setup where you can put the main window on one monitor and a mixer view in the other. But some of you will only have a 13 inch or 15 inch laptop monitor. And as you can see, the mixer, if I expand it here, it's going to take up a lot of screen real estate and pretty much block out my track area. So the inspector shows us only the most important channel strips that we need to see at any given moment. So just a quick review. The channel strips for the selected track in the main window will show up on the far left of the inspector and on the highlighted channel in the mixer. So this channel strip is the exact same as this channel strip. But just so you know, I can adjust the viewable controls for both of these independently. For example, if I wanted to have the track icon show up in the mixer, but not in the inspector, I could do that. So I'm going to control click in an empty spot here of the channel strip, choose channel strip components, track icons, and now you can see the icons are only viewed in the mixer. I am able to see output destinations in the mixer, and this is very helpful if you have really big sessions and you can't find where your output is or where your buses are routed to. I'm going to go here to the output selector, and I'm going to shift click on it. And as you can see on the far right, my output is highlighting and blinking over there. Same thing with the bus. I'm going to shift click on the bus, and it's going to show me where bus 9 is going to. Well, hey guys, thanks for watching. And I know I didn't cover all the aspects of tracks, but there are differences between software instrument tracks, MIDI tracks, and audio tracks. So I will be covering the differences between those two in some upcoming videos.